How did Lucy from the UK learn to speak fluent Spanish by the time she was 18 years old? Well, in this video, I'm going to break down her method for learning Spanish so that you too can learn from her success and become fluent in a new language. There's love. I wanted to marry a Spanish man. There's deception. And I remember being so cheeky. There's passion. Oh, I was so hungry for it. And finally, and it all went wrong. Stay till the end if you want to find out what that is all about. Let's get into it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Ollie Richards, and this channel is all about helping you learn a new language quickly through the power of story so that you can become fluent faster and live your best life. Now, today's subject is Lucy Bella Earl, otherwise known as English with Lucy, a famous YouTuber with millions of subscribers. But it turns out that Lucy speaks really good Spanish too. Let's have a look. Sí, lo hago. Bueno, empecé porque estaba dando clases de inglés en Sevilla. Sí. Y yo no sabía explicar la gramática, así que me, me puse en YouTube para buscar profesores. Sí. Y me, me resultaron muy... No aburridos, pero no interesantes. Vale, eh, <laughs> les resultaron súper aburridos y no quiero decirlo, pero... <laughs> <laughs> Now, Lucy's journey is a bit of a roller coaster, so to really learn the lessons of how she learned Spanish, I'm going to break this video down into two parts. I'm going to start by telling you what she did to learn Spanish, and then I'm going to circle back and dig beneath the surface to see if we can't uncover the real secret to her success. I joined a new school when I was 13, and there you had to take two languages. So, obviously, I took the French that I already knew, and then I had to join this these Spanish classes, and everyone else had done two or three years of Spanish, albeit schoolgirl Spanish, um, and I was just thrown in at the deep end. I didn't really have any support to help me catch up, and I absolutely hated it. Sounds like the experience a lot of us have with languages at school, right? We don't know, we just don't know why we're doing it, but then... It sounds silly, but one day it just clicked. When we were going through the verb tables, I suddenly saw the logic in it, and I thought, oh, actually, this is almost like a formula that you have to learn. I think for all of us who become interested in languages, there's always a moment when things just click. You know, when we think to ourselves, you know what, maybe I could enjoy this. But what I want you to remember here is what Lucy said about Spanish being a formula. Let's rewind that. This is almost like a formula that you have to learn. Now, not everyone thinks of language as being a formula, but Lucy does. And this is going to become important later on in her story. So anyway, we're going to fast forward a year or two now to where Lucy changes schools, specifically because she wants to keep studying Spanish and the school where she was at didn't give her that option. In this whole year of 500 students, one person took German, two people took French, and there were three of us taking Spanish. So I thought, oh, this is so annoying. We're in such a small class when actually it turned out to be the most amazing experience because there were three of us with two teachers <laughs> learning Spanish. So we got the most incredible amount of attention and all of these opportunities. And it just made us all fall in love with it even more. Lots of different factors can contribute to a successful language learning journey. But having an opportunity like this, a, a tiny class at school with only two or three students, that's the kind of experience that can really help you discover a passion that you didn't know you had. And that's exactly what happened. Lucy became so passionate about Spanish that she saved up all of her money and paid for herself to go on a study abroad trip to Spain during school holidays. And I went over there. It was in August, which is the worst time. Seville in August yeah. is like 40 degrees. Isn't it? Yeah, I struggled, but it was amazing. And I met loads of people from Seville. Eventually, I kept going back and doing this again and again and again. So I'd work for four months, save up enough money, wait till it was a break from school and go out there. And this was when I was 16, 17. And I think I went three times in total. But it was amazing. I met so many friends. And then eventually I met the guy that would then go on to be my partner for four years. Um, and we ended oh, up when you were so when you were 16 or so that's quite early 17 when I met him oh. yes yeah it was early I was go get <laughs> so you can see the direction this is going now she's she's 17 she's traveling to Spain all the time she met a guy so was she fluent yet yes I'd say by 18 I was you know more or less fluent whatever that may be um, and then it was the years after that probably my the next two years I became really quite fluent to the point where I could very comfortably converse with native speakers speaking at full velocity and then I'd say in when I was 19 that's when I lived in, for a year in Seville with my partner that's when I felt that I hit you know the, the absolute peak and that people would ask me, where are you from? Are you, are you from here? And, and things like that. And that was a, a real buzz. Now, the ending of this story is kind of sad. Or happy, maybe. I'll tell you about the ending at the end of the video. But look, 
What I've shown you so far is the glossy version of the story, but it's time to dig deeper because I think it's easy to look at Lucy's story and think, well, it's all right for her with all these wonderful opportunities, but you know, I can't just disappear off to Spain. But that would be missing the point because you don't need to disappear to Spain to learn Spanish like Lucy did. It's not the opportunities that made her successful. Lucy made Lucy successful, and this is what we can learn from. Part of the fact that I lived in such a rural location, you know, I didn't actually have so many local friends in my own language. So I did kind of think, well, maybe I can go to Spain and just start again over there. But when I went over there, I really felt that I fitted in. I felt really funny as well. Even though I didn't know the language, I felt funnier in Spanish than I did in English. So yeah, it was just a really, really strong desire to be over there. And I knew that in order to do that, I had to learn the language, but it wasn't that I had to either. It was just, these were the natural stepping stones to get to, a, to where I wanted to be. The thing about a new language is that it offers you something quite special. The opportunity for a new identity, the chance to be a, a new you. Could this be the real reason that Lucy fell in love with Spanish? I think it was the desire to be different. Um, I think lots of teenagers want to be different and special for some reason. And I noticed that actually not many people are doing this. It made me feel, when I went out, you know, just on a normal night out with my friends in England, I was just any old average girl. But when I went out on a night out in Spain, I was, um, you know, able to kind of shock everyone. And I felt funnier and I felt more interesting as well. I wanted to be interesting and different. And Listen to that. I could shock everyone. I felt funnier. I was more interesting. You can see why this is quite desirable for a bored teenager, can't you? But we've also heard this somewhere before, haven't we? In my breakdown video of Matt versus Japan, where we saw how Japanese was a way for him to escape from something back home. It was kind of like running away. It was kind of like, I, you know, everyone has their own problems. And I just got this, I was like young and naive. I got this idea in my head. Like if I went to Japan, everything would be amazing. Emotions matter in language learning because speaking another language is a process of redefining your identity. So when Lucy went on a study abroad trip to Spain and saw that many British students made no effort at all to speak Spanish, listen to how she reacted to being the only English person who was making an effort to learn Spanish. There was a, another group of them and they just hung out together and, and didn't really try. And, and I, I'm not sure if I felt better than them. I just, I liked not being like that. And, uh, and pushing myself out of my comfort zone. And if you like pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, then please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications bell too so you hear about the next video that I make like this. Okay, so Lucy went to Spain, she had a great opportunity, but we also know that most people who go and live abroad struggle to learn the language. So what was it that made her successful? I would definitely say the biggest thing is working on general fluency rather than accuracy. You know, I could hold a conversation and sound more or less like a native speaker, but I would make a lot of mistakes. And I would much rather be like that than speak absolutely perfect, word for word, perfect Spanish, um, but sound like a robot. I think it's all about trying to sound natural and just, you know, what's the odd mistake? M making a note of it, but. There's a dichotomy in language learning, which is accuracy versus Fluency. Now, accuracy means trying to get everything right and make no mistakes, while fluency means trying to communicate naturally and not really caring whether you're making mistakes or not. Now, ideally, you want both. You want accuracy and fluency, but it can be difficult to focus on both at once. And that's why language learners often tend to care more about one rather than the other. And Lucy is quite clear that what she cares about is fluency. So Lucy is a communicator, and that fits with her psychology of really wanting to fit in. I spent a lot of time with my partner's grandmother, for example, and she, would, she wouldn't correct herself around me because she didn't know any different. I was probably one of the only native English speakers she'd ever met. Um, and so picking up those things and just hearing them in context again and again and again and learning like a baby, basically, no one was explaining what these things meant. I just had to kind of work it out for myself. Because if you ask them to explain some of their idiomatic phrases, they wouldn't know how to, they'd say, well, that's what it is. That's what it means. Ah, uh, the old benevolent grandma strategy. It works every time. And by the way, if you want to see the full uncut version of this interview with Lucy, you can find it here on my Instagram. I'll put the link in the description below. Now, look, what I want you to focus on here is that in spite of the fantastic opportunities that Lucy had, she worked really, really hard. If there was something that I truly didn't understand, I would not let it go. But I was just always a little bit wired. So if I was riding on a bus and I saw, for example, I don't know, a pigeon, 
And I'd always think, like, what's that in Spanish? And if I didn't know it, I would write it down in my notes app on my iPhone. And then I'd look at, I'd always look it up. Maybe a couple of days later, I'd have five words that I'd noted down. I'd always look those up as well. So I, that was one thing I never, ever let anything go. Because if you don't do it in the moment, you won't do it later. Whenever I talk about immersion generally, or my story learning method specifically, I often get asked whether immersion is enough by itself. And I think that in theory it is, but I also believe that there is a role for some deliberate practice in your language learning, just to move things along a little bit. And you can see that here with Lucy's technique of noting down specific words that she wanted to learn. And I remember being so cheeky and pretending I didn't speak any Spanish to people sometimes. <laughs> and then I'd suddenly launch into conversation. I was just I probably shouldn't have done that, but I was just testing things out, having fun. It was normally at, you know, a concert or a, a night out or something. Okay, so I confess I've done this too. I don't always have the guts to do it, but I have done it. But you know who also used to play speaking games of this type? I'd be like, hey, are you Japanese? And, and they'd be like, like, say yes in like broken English. And I'm like, oh, I can speak Japanese. And they'd be like, really? Let me see. And then I just start switching into fluent Japanese and they'd be like blown away. So yeah, this is cheeky, but what it points to is taking control. Getting speaking practice can be hard, especially when others insist on speaking English with you all the time. And as you know, there's always an excuse, right? But when all is said and done, it's the people who find a way to get speaking practice who will end up learning to speak the best. Now, what have you found interesting about Lucy's journey so far? Leave me a comment below to let me know. I used to be really fascinated with people's mouths when they were talking. So I always, <laughs> I remember people telling me like, Stop looking at my mouth, look at my eyes. Um, but I wanted to, I noticed at some point, this was a breakthrough moment. I noticed that the way they said D's was different. I'd put my tongue back and go D, and they would go D like that. Did you spot how many times she used the word notice there? I noticed how their D's sound different. Well, the ability to notice things is one of the key skills in picking up a new language. And it's worth remembering this in your own learning. Don't just wait for a teacher to point things out to you, start noticing interesting things about the language, but you know, don't stop there, don't just notice it, copy it too and mimic what you hear. And when I started mimicking that, at first I think I forced it a little bit and then afterwards it came naturally. Um, that's when I made a real breakthrough moment. In the clip I played earlier of Lucy speaking Spanish, you might have noticed how good her accent was. Did you? Well, this is why. One of my guiding principles in life is that that which you focus on will improve. And Lucy's borderline obsession with mouth shape and pronunciation is undoubtedly what gave her the Spanish accent that she has. And incidentally, something I love about Lucy is that she takes this love of pronunciation into her own teaching too. And when I teach pronunciation, I really focus on mouth shape and tongue position. And I'm not afraid to get that camera right up in my mouth <laughs> to show them because, you know, lots of students and learners of English don't have that luxury of being able to stare a native speaker in the mouth um, like I did. So, yeah, that's what I try and give to them. Now, I told you earlier that there was a bit of a sad ending to Lucy's dream life in Spain. So, Lucy, what happened? And then I did have to go back to the UK without my partner. I had the idea. I, I don't know how much to say, really. My ex-partner was quite a, a jealous person. And I'd had the, the idea of creating a YouTube channel for a while and he wasn't very happy about me maybe showing myself on the internet. So obviously that relationship had to come to an end. Um, and I did go ahead with the, the YouTube channel and I worked on that for two years. And then I was actually about to move to Barcelona, but I needed to pass my driving test uh, before I left. Um, but in, in that time, I met my fiance, William, and I kept fa failing my driving test and we kept going on more, more dates in the meantime because you had to wait three weeks after each test before you could retake it. And in the end, it came to the point where I thought, you know, I'm not sure if I should actually move to Barcelona <laughs> because I quite like this person. Um, and I'd never felt like that before. So in the end, yeah, the life took a massive detour. And I'm, I'm very glad that it did. I am sad that he's a farmer and we can't spend that much time in Spain. Um, but life is sac full of sacrifices, isn't it? So just have to see. So a sad turn, but a happy ending. Glad to hear it. So what can we say about how Lucy learned Spanish? Well, for me, Lucy's journey shows that method is nowhere near as important as the 
attitude that you bring to your learning project. Having a clear, single-minded reason for learning, total dedication, noticing details of the language, and then obsessing over those details, obsessing over learning them. And then there's this fantastic de desire to be someone else in the language. And you know, I don't know if this is the kind of thing that you can manufacture. I don't know, I'm not sure you can manufacture this emotion. If you're totally happy and content in your life, then you know, why, why would you do something like this? But I have noticed this phenomenon of escapism again and again in high achievers. So it is interesting to see that at play with Lucy. But the elephant in the room here with Lucy is the amount of immersion that she had. And you might be thinking to yourself, but you know, I'm stuck at home. How, how could I ever do what Lucy did? Well, in this video over here, I'm gonna show you a strange method that you can use to learn any language with immersion from your living room. You don't have to go abroad. You don't have to uproot your life. And it's also a lot of fun. So click the video over here and I'll show you exactly how the method works.